There may not be a more potent symbol of a global pandemic than the face mask. But despite their widespread use in other countries, in the UK, the government maintains they're not so necessary. very different, but in terms of the hard evidence and what the UK government recommends, we do not recommend face masks for general wearing by the public. Government advice is that only those in close contact with COVID-19 patients or people displaying symptoms themselves need to wear masks. It's in step with the World Health Organization and was, up until recently, the line taken by the US, but not anymore. The CDC is now advising Americans to wear cloth face coverings in settings where social distancing may be unattainable. In Austria, masks are mandatory in supermarkets and on public transport. And in Morocco, it's a crime not to wear one when out in public. So is it time for the UK to rethink the face mask? At the heart of the debate is how coronavirus spreads. Researchers know the virus is transmitted through pathogen-carrying droplets, which can be transferred between people via objects and surfaces, like door handles, or through airborne particles. When an infected person coughs or sneezes, droplets are expelled violently into the surrounding atmosphere. It's this airborne spread which has made lockdown and social distancing vital tools in combating the spread of coronavirus around the world. But as we learn more about how it spreads, some say these measures may not be enough. Dr. Boris Gorbanov is the technical director of Ancon Medical, a UK company which makes infectious disease detection devices. He says new research carried out by the company shows aerosols, which could potentially carry the virus, can travel much further in some settings than two meters. Our, our model uh, was used with data collected from um, previous research. Some of them uh, related to current coro corona, uh, COVID-19, and some of them previous uh, similar viruses. A model shows that a single cough can produce about 1,000 particles, and those particles in few um, seconds, 10, 20 seconds, one minute, can fly downwind quite a long distance. 25 meters easily, 50 meters. The study was carried out using a computer model, which predicts how aerosol particles move in the atmosphere. Dr. Gorbanov found that introducing masks into the computer model scenario drastically dropped the rate of exposure to potentially infection-laden particles. Using normal surgical masks, it, it's sufficient to get down concentration and chances of infection uh, by factor of 10, sometimes by factor more than 10, 20, 30. However, it's a model and it needs to be proven in the real world. It's similar to research conducted at Aalto University in Finland, which showed that in a supermarket setting, clouds of droplets coughed or sneezed from an infected person can permeate the surrounding area and linger in the air for several minutes. The scientists involved suggested people spend as little time as possible in enclosed spaces to limit their risk of being exposed to the lingering air droplets. Meanwhile, in America, Professor Lydia Boiba of MIT's Civil and Environmental Engineering Department has published research suggesting two meters is nowhere near enough to prevent the transmission of coronavirus. Her study is illustrated by some equal parts compelling and disgusting video footage. This is a sneeze slowed down to 2,000 frames per second. At this speed, cameras capture potentially coronavirus-carrying particles being expelled up to seven meters in a turbulent gas cloud. According to the research, the moist and warm atmosphere inside the cloud allows droplets to remain in the air for several minutes. In Asia, the wearing of masks has become a cultural norm for people displaying symptoms of illness. But as concerns that healthy carriers of coronavirus could be unwittingly spreading the disease amongst the population, many Asian countries have enforced the wearing of masks as a precaution against these asymptomatic people. But after a recent review of the research, the WHO has stuck to their advice that for healthy people, wearing a mask is not necessary. Why? Research suggests that when used by the general public, uneducated in the correct way to fit and wear masks, their level of protection against infectious diseases is negligible and can create a false sense of security for those who wear them. With masks outside, I mean, if you're socially distancing, you're two metres apart from other people, the risk of um, the uh, virus transmitting to you is, is very, very minimal. So what's the mask doing? 
Um, if you are, however, uh, face to face with patients who've got COVID-19, that's different. You know that they might be excreting the virus in their breath when they cough and they sneeze. So it's logical that a, hair, uh, a healthcare pr pr professional would have a, a, a good mask of high quality. There's no point having a mask of poor quality because you're breathing in through the tops of the masks, the side of the masks and underneath the mask. And if the virus is penetrating through the porous tissue itself, it's no good. Another concern is that widespread use of face masks could lead to a shortage for those who definitely do need them, such as the doctors, nurses and other healthcare workers battling coronavirus on wards across the country. That's why in America, citizens are being encouraged to use homemade cloth masks and told explicitly to avoid surgical and N95 masks, vital kit for frontline health workers. What's not up for debate is that right now, the most effective way to combat COVID-19 is the advice you'll no doubt have heard already. Wash your hands and stay at home.